Every human being was born to, be, to born to be a leader, but the majority of them will die as followers. And that's because our culture is designed to suffocate your leadership potential and convince you that you are a follower. They've also convinced you that leadership is only reserved for a minute elite group of people who were chosen by God to be the ones in charge. And the rest of us are relegated to being slaves or subordinates or followers or subjects. And this is ungodly thinking. I am convinced that every human being was created to be a leader. And the books that I chose and shipped up here all the way from our offices are designed to help you as a 19-year-old, 25-year-old, 50-year-old, maybe a 75-year-old person to stimulate your hidden leadership potential. I was the most unlikely person to be a leader. A family of 11 children born in the poorest part of our island in a village called Bainstown in a wooden house on four rocks, sleeping on a wooden floor on a mat. And today, I have the privilege of advising heads of state, training companies, developing executives in Fortune 500 companies and building a leadership institute with modules in many different nations. How do you go from sleeping on the floor to advising the president of nations? I had to change my thinking. And I did it by pursuing knowledge, educating myself. As a matter of fact, I couldn't trust society because society has already chosen what you can do and cannot do. And they educate you to be a servant. And they train you to get a job. And so I had to break away from that culture and discover the truth about life myself. Books are my best friend. My library is my greatest value of possession. If you, if you had a choice to give me a box of chicken or a book, I would take the book because the book will teach me how to fry my own chicken. <laughs> so never think of your stomach before you think of your head. Your stomach has no creative power. Your brain is a muscle. They finally figured that out about 15 years ago. And all muscles must be exercised in order to be strengthened. And the scientists have discovered that the brain is exercised by thinking new thoughts which means that when you engage your mind in new concepts, you are exercising your brain power and developing your capacity to grow your thinking faculties. And this is why we encourage people to pursue knowledge. Write this reference down, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It says, in all your getting, get wisdom. The next statement says, and if it costs you all you have, go after understanding. If it costs you what? That means if all you have is $20, 
You got a choice between a Kentucky Fried Chicken box or a book. And God says, go for the book. If it's the last thing you have, he says, buy knowledge. Because food will last in your system for six hours and it comes out of the drought. But if you read a book with that same 20 bucks, it lasts how long? You take it into eternity. So wise people know how to invest their money. And the greatest investment, according to that verse right there, is get knowledge, understanding. So I really beg you tonight to invest in yourself. I do it, and that's why I stand here to talk to you. And the more you invest in yourself, the more God trusts you with people. Like Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved of God. There's some folks God don't approve because they didn't study. And then it says, then you'll be a workman who won't make God ashamed. So turn your home into a library. Turn your shelves into a university. And turn your armchair into a classroom. And transform your life in your own house. And watch God expose you to the world. Because he won't be ashamed of you. And all you're getting, get understanding. If it costs you all you have, get wisdom, knowledge.